So that is sort of the breakdown of how you go about taking this core belief that you've put up on this pedestal, this table, to be dismantling all of the things that you have going on that are just holding it up. Hey, you guys watching this screen right now because I'm currently editing this video and throughout pretty much the entire thing the camera could not decide whether to focus on my face or the stuff behind me so it comes in and out the whole time there's no way to fix it but I thought that the way that I presented what I want to talk about in this video came across pretty clearly so just apologizing in advance thanks for bearing with me okay let's get our recording all right, and we have sound. Hey, you guys, so welcome to my more formal setup for the day. This is necessitated by the need for this microphone. You might remember from my money-saving tips video that I did for you guys a few days back that my neighbors were having a siding put on their home. Well, that is still not a completed project, only today the workers have brought their Bluetooth speakers with them, and there was really nowhere in the house that I could go where my regular mic wasn't gonna pick up that sound. This one should do the job. So roll with me. And actually, I kind of like it. I kind of like the lighting and just this is working for me. This is actually kind of cool. OK, so for today's video, I wanted to launch into something I had promised in an earlier video when I was talking about the belief cycle and getting into what your core beliefs about yourself actually are. I promised that I would come back with an exercise for how to dismantle and work on replacing some of the more negative core beliefs that you might discover that you have about yourself. So if you didn't watch that video, go back and take a listen to it because I talk about this sort of internal call and response exercise that you can do with yourself to really root down and figure out what those core beliefs are. And I also mentioned a book that I read that sort of helped me formulate my own technique for doing it. So you can go and check that out and then come back. And if you've discovered some negative core beliefs that you hold about yourself, this is where you're going to get into how to go about replacing those. So the best way to do this is to, once you've identified that core belief, imagine it sitting on a table and this table is what is holding up this core belief. So then the legs of the table are all of the sub beliefs that you hold that continue to support this negative core belief. And the way to kind of get into these table legs, if you will, means looking back and discovering sort of what are these series of things that I have accumulated and stacked together throughout my life that are continuing to support the fact that this core belief is true. Because to get into this exercise, you have to sort of adopt the mindset that this core belief that you've been supporting on your own by building these table legs your whole life isn't actually true. And oftentimes you'll find that that is the case. And that has to do with many, many things, including our perception of ourselves, our perception of situations that we have lived through throughout our lives. But ultimately what it comes down to is this very human thing that everybody does where we assign meaning to events that we experience throughout our lives, okay? And then what we do is we look for patterns in those experiences that we've had that we have chosen to assign the same meaning to. And then once we have a pattern, that gets shoved into a table leg and it's like, well, look at all of this evidence that I have to support this core belief. So what you have to do is go through and find examples of those patterns, but then switch your perspective. Tell yourself a different story about what happened in each of those events so that the meaning you've assigned to them can now be something different. And when that meaning changes, it's often not going to support that core belief that you've had it upholding your whole life. So let's take an example. If you have discovered, for instance, that you have a core belief that maybe you are unlovable, let's go into the table legs here and find some things that have happened that in your mind have confirmed that you are unlovable. So this can actually go as far back as early childhood. And in fact, it often does. So let's say, I'll take an example from my own life. Let's say in elementary school, you had a very best friend who one day just decided she wasn't gonna talk to you anymore. And you never knew why, but you were deeply hurt by this, obviously. And with no additional information, the perspective in your young mind probably was, as it was for me, I just must be unlovable or unlikable, or there must be something fundamentally wrong with me. So you take that event in isolation. 
And then let's say maybe somewhere junior high, high school, uh, maybe the first Sadie Hawkins dance. Do they still do those? Uh, The first time you maybe approach somebody to go to a dance with you, go to homecoming, go to whatever, and you are shot down. Maybe it hasn't happened to you yet. Maybe it's happened a couple times, which is another mini pattern. See how this works. And again, you have no other information except the fact that, you know, especially in adolescence, right? While this person must be repulsed by me, I must be unlovable. Let's say another example, you know, maybe from around the same time period, there's the whole timeline is in play here, right? Let's say there's maybe an incident at home where it really has nothing to do with you. Let's say your mom or dad comes home from work and they're just up in their head. They've had a terrible day and you, I don't know, didn't do a chore that they asked you to do. But because in your mind, you haven't done anything wrong. Maybe this just slipped your mind. Maybe you didn't think it was a big deal. But maybe because of what they had going on, their reaction to you not doing the chore was much larger than it otherwise should have been. Again, in your adolescent mind, wow, I've done something wrong. I've really upset one of my caretakers. They're punishing me when I don't really feel like I've done anything wrong, right? Like the punishment isn't meeting the crime sort of thing. That can also contribute to this mentality that you are unlovable. So you see how these things can kind of build even into adulthood where you've got, you know, breakups and dating scenarios and friendships that fall apart. All of these things in your subconscious mind, you are stacking the fact that you have assigned this meaning to all of these events and your mind sees this pattern and it goes, wow, you really are just unlovable. But you can see how if now we go back through these things, right? So let's go back to early elementary school. If you have a friend that for whatever reason doesn't speak to you anymore, I still to this day have no idea why like my eight-year-old bestie decided she didn't want to talk to me anymore. If I had to guess, I would say probably it had something to do with maybe her mom thought I was a bad influence. Her family didn't get along with my family. I don't know. But you can see how now as an adult, I can see that there are so many other things at play there than, wow, I'm just unlovable. The same thing happens with approaching somebody to go to a dance with you or go on a date with you. Rejection hurts. Everybody wants to avoid rejection. But now it's pretty apparent, right, that just because somebody rejects you doesn't mean that you're unlovable. It could just mean you're not their cup of tea. It could mean that they've already kind of started dating somebody else. And even if it's not exclusive yet, they're not looking to fill their roster with anybody new. There is any number of reasons behind a rejection. So here again, this doesn't really support the belief that you're unlovable. And the example that we gave with the angry parent, yes, there's certainly some issues going on there with their own emotional regulation. But again, looking at it from the outside and removing yourself just from that perspective of what's going on, you know, the way they're treating you. When you open the aperture a little bit and you can see that whole picture that, wow, they aren't regulating their emotions very well, they've had a horrible day. You can see that their reaction to your, you know, misbehavior isn't about you at all and therefore again doesn't support the belief that you're unlovable so this is the way we go through this dismantling process and oftentimes there will be more than one pattern at play there might be several key points in your life timeline that you can hearken back to and say wow like I really have held my belief that that this is what happened, that my perspective of that situation was 100% correct. And it seems silly almost when you look back and you're like, why did I think that for sure 100% my perspective of that situation was right when any number of things could be going on? And the more you learn to think like this, the more you train your mind to sort of question your own perception of things like we talked about in the last video, it becomes a lot easier to open up to the possibility that these stories you have told yourself throughout your life are wrong. And in many cases, with the, with the core belief exercise like this, you want them to be wrong. You want to assign a different meaning to them. And somebody might say, well, if I can assign any meaning that I want to them, then what's the right meaning? 
And I think that is a fascinating question. But for purposes of this video, my answer is, who cares? If all of us are going around making up whatever meaning we want about our lives, taking information that we have based on our perception of a situation from our own perspective of that situation, and we can decide what's going on and what meaning we want to draw from it, why wouldn't we want to draw the most positive, self-supporting meaning possible? So that is sort of the breakdown of how you go about taking this core belief that you've put up on this pedestal, this table, to be dismantling all of the things that you have going on that are just holding it up. So if you have a new core belief, right, that you wanna knock that old one off the top of that table and put a new one in its place, you need to start building up your table legs to support that new belief. And the best way to do that is by changing the meanings that you've had that you have identified in all of these patterns that you have now sort of like combed through. So for instance, in the one that we, in the example that we were just talking about, obviously you're trying to change your core belief from I'm unlovable to I'm a really lovable person. Okay. So you can flip the meaning around that you find in all of these patterns to say, wow, like I wasn't unlovable in any of those situations. And maybe what you can do at that point is just knock all of those stories and patterns out of the running because they don't they don't serve you to support your new core belief. Maybe instead you can be thinking back to instances where you really felt like you were lovable, where you really felt like you were the best version of yourself and start finding new patterns that maybe you've ignored because you just haven't been trained to have that positive mindset looking for the positive patterns because you've been so preoccupied subconsciously identifying these negative patterns that are supporting the negative belief. Sometimes when you start doing this, it can feel very difficult. It can feel almost like you're lying to yourself, like you're making stuff up because you've been convinced for so long that the way you have been thinking about it is the truth. And so it almost feels like that sort of fake it till you make it mentality, if you will, where it's like, well, you know, if I'm deciding that that wasn't true, but like, what if nobody else thinks that that wasn't true? And I'm just over here sort of fooling myself. I think that's the hardest part of this shift in mindset is convincing yourself that these old stories aren't the truth. They are no more true or false than the new stories that you are telling yourself. And that's where it gets a little bit cerebral is we're trained to be looking for the truth and finding the real meaning. And that goes back to what I had said before. If we get to just decide what the real meaning is, why wouldn't we bank on the one that makes us feel the best? So as you're going through this, if you find yourself having kind of a hard time with it, if it's bringing up uncomfortable things for you, I highly suggest reaching out to somebody. I am not a trained therapist. I am not a trained mental health worker in any way, shape, or form. This is all stuff that I learned through a life coaching course that I am just sharing because it has been incredibly valuable to me. So if you are having a hard time or this is bringing up some triggering things for you, please by all means reach out to a professional. Otherwise, if you have questions or discussion points that you wanna bring up here in our little community, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for listening and let me know what you think about this setup because I'm actually kind of digging it and maybe I'll just start doing YouTube videos like this from now on. Either way, this is where I'm gonna leave you for now and I will see you guys in the next one. So what if I told you that it really doesn't matter what under eye concealer that you use? You do not need to be furiously stamping your face with a beauty blender. There's so little product here, you guys. So, so little product.